Well, hello there. Let's have a little get to know me session. How does that sound? My idea with Googlepreneur is pretty much to show you everything. The good, bad, and the ugly. Anything from the mindset to the quotes that changed my life, the trips and the relationships and the opportunities that were put in front of me and the lessons that I have learned from that. My goal is to help you change your life and have your entrepreneurial business to take you to the next level with a little bit of a knowledge that I hold. Hi, you might know me as Google Becky, but my actual name is Kochish Yunjir. Right. I decided to sell real estate back in 2011 with that name. And Yunjir is really not a name that any of you would be like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to pronounce that. I want to buy a house with her or sell a house with her, right? Like, no, everybody was like, what the heck is that? Is that a man? Is that a woman? How do I pronounce it? So let me take you back a little bit into my childhood. So I'm originally from Transylvania, Romania. I got the great idea that I'm moving to the US all by myself back in 2003. I think one of my first recollections and I'm going to America came from in 1989, communism ended in Romania. And my dad came home with a color TV and two VC, one VCR player and two VCR tapes, I guess they were called. One of them was 48 Hours by Eddie Murphy. I know it's not coming to America. It was 48 Hours by Eddie Murphy. Mind you, until then, and this is 1989, communism. Communism, imagine it's like living in a shoebox with a lid on. You have no access to the outside. You have no idea what's going on in the world. There's no Western news. There's no Western television. There's no Western newspaper. There's... So there was no way of us knowing what's going on in the world besides what was happening in Romania. So when they shot Ceausescu in 1989, we finally had access to the Western world. And when my dad came home with color TV and, and uh, <laughs> uh, 48 Hours by Eddie Murphy, that was my first time, A, realizing that Black people exist because I've never seen one, not alive, not on television. And B, to me, he seemed so happy. So as an eight-year-old, I just thought, oh my gosh, he must be happy because of where he's at. What did I know? I was eight years old, right? So this was my first recollection that I'm going wherever that man is at because he seems so happy to me. So I lived in a town called Chiksarada. I know you're like, what did you just say? I lived in my hometown until I was 14. Then I went from there to high school in this other city called Sekagibarhe, which was in the same county but a different town. I lived in a dormitory, so I only went home once, one weekend every month. Even then, sometimes I went to my boyfriend's. You know, typical teenager. Okay, guys, this is where I went to high school in from 1996 to 2000. Um, the school, this building was built about 120 years ago, but the main building was built 360 years ago. So it's so much history here. And uh, you want to go sit in the exact spot? Hopefully, the classroom is open. And I sat 20 years ago. I can't believe that much time went by. Or it says leap two, and then this was the uh, physics room, and then this was my classroom. I literally sat here for four years straight. Oh my gosh, I can't have memories. This is where I used to sit actually, right here for four years. I sat in this spot. And that's the old building, that's 300 and some odd years old. We are in the newer building, which is 120. And this is my classroom. This is where I got in trouble a long, long time ago because <laughs> I fell asleep right here. Oh, also, I failed English. Can you believe that? I failed English and my English teacher said that I will probably never speak English. There's no hope for me. I think I do just fine. What do you think? And then from there, I went to college in another country called Hungary. At this time, 2003, I'm in Hungary and I am supposed to pass an English exam. And I was like, there's no freaking way. I barely spoke English, right? Like I did and I'm not even the basics. 
So I figured, I'm like, I'll just go to a country where they speak it. I, I'm sure I'll pick it up fast and then I'll go back home, take my exam, yada yada, live life, right? Well, I did. I applied for three jobs. I applied for being an au pair. I applied for working on a cruise ship and I applied, believe it or not, and thank God that God doesn't answer all of our prayers because I also applied for a job in the middle of the ocean on an oil rig. Yes. Can you imagine me in the middle of the ocean on an oil rig? <laughs> thank God. Thank God that God doesn't give us all of our prayers. Goodness gracious. Thankfully, the au pair job called me first. I accepted that position and I came out to the U.S. to become an au pair. So in 2003 is when I packed up and I decided to come to the U.S. to learn the language. The idea was, and I learned the language and I go back, right? But two months after I got here, I met Dwayne. Dwayne is my husband, has been for, this is our 20th year. Um, met him two months after I arrived to the country in a bar on St. Patrick's Day because where else do you meet a good man, right, besides in a bar? He gave me his name, he gave me his email address, his phone number, his home address, like everything on a napkin. I still have the napkin. And then he waited the official three days. This was a Tuesday. Then he called me on a Friday, asked me out for a Saturday. That Sunday, first date, Saturday, <laughs> the day after Sunday, I met his parents. I mean, you know, right? I mean, we were ready to meet the parents, I'm assuming. So I met Gogo in 2003. This was St. Patrick's Day. Me and my friends went to the bar, went to the little pub in Brighton, Michigan, Little Carl's, and I'll never forget, one of my buddies was coming back from the bathroom. He's like, hey, there's a chick with a hot accent over there. And I was like, oh, really, where? I immediately went over to her, threw everything at her, had spent some time at her table for probably a few hours at that point. And, uh, you know, we hit it off and I made sure that everything I left her at the point in time, uh, she could get in contact with me. So I, I mean, I think it was embarrassing, but I left her my phone number, uh, name, email address, physical address as well. So I didn't want to leave anything a chance to not see her again. The rest was history. Saying all these things out loud, it, it makes me laugh. Sunday I met his parents. Two months later, I was moved in. And two months after that, we were married. We were engaged after three and a half months, and we were married in four. So yeah, we moved pretty quickly. But really as a person and a human being, I mean, she's really an incredible woman. I, I think uh, she's certainly driven. I think everybody knows she's driven. And that comes from her history growing up. I mean, she certainly has an amazing family. I think there were times were tough back then. She was born in 81 and the socialist stuff collapsed in 1989. Um, so she's seen a lot, they've, they've experienced a lot. Her, her parents have experienced a lot. And I think that gives her a unique depth as a person and a human being. And that was something that I was really intrigued with when I met her. She has the business stuff down to a science. I mean, she is just a natural, successful person. And I'm so proud of her. I can't tell you how proud I am of her. You know, she used to shake like a deer in headlights. And fast forward four or five years forward later, and now she's speaking in front of, you know, rooms of over 10,000 people. Um, it's just unbelievable. She's She's got balls. She's got a tremendous amount of courage. I don't think she's just a natural. She pushed herself to become who she is. So if you think, oh, I can't do it, you know, Google's it, she's unique, blah, blah, blah. It's not true. I mean, she had to face fear and push through it just like everybody else. And she was probably one of the most severe cases, I would say, of speaking in front of a camera that I've ever seen. And look at her now. And I'm just so proud of you, babe. Um, you deserve everything you have. And this show is gonna be amazing. And you might even get a little sneak peek into our life. And if you do look out, um, I think we're pretty entertaining. So if we ever do decide to bring the camera inside of our house, um, it should make for some good footage. Um, but you know, one thing you'll learn about us is we just love to live life, have a good time, um, you know, and enjoy family and friends. I mean, it's, it's pretty much that simple. Go, go, love you. So this is our 20th years. We have two adorable boys. They are 15 and 13, Kobe and Duke. They also have an American name and a Hungarian name as well. So Kobe is Kobe Istvan. Kobe after Dwayne's uncle and Istvan after my dad. And then Duke is Duke Jozef. Duke is after Dwayne's grandpa and Jozef after my grandpa. So they have a Hungarian and an American name because I didn't want them just to have a Hungarian name or just American because they're both in my eyes, right? I wouldn't say have a full-blown Hungarian name spelled Hungarian way, right? But it's so hard to pronounce. I didn't want them to be, for that to be their main name. 
my mom, I think she's the best mom in the world. She's definitely my favorite mom. She's always been the best, the kindest, best person you'll ever meet. She's the kindest person ever. I love her so very much. And she's a, a really good cook. I already ate some of it. I know there's nothing there because me and my dad just ate most of it. She's from Romania, but she's Hungarian. I always get that mixed up. But we go back to Romania about once a year during the summertime, usually. But we didn't get to go this year. I'm very sad about it because I miss it very much. Hey, I am Kobe Besky. I am uh, Gogo Besky's son. So as you can see, I'm in her office because of the real estate sign. What's it like living with her? Normal. It's a normal household, you know. It's. I mean, she's in her office a lot, so that's the only non-normal part of it, I guess. But besides that, it's just a normal house, you know. We've got dog. My dad, my mom, and my brother, and me, that's it. She's very happy-go-lucky, positive. I mean, what you see on camera really is just what she's like. She, it's just her, it's her natural personality. That's just how she acts 24-7. She's just always happy-go-lucky, you know, think on the bright side, yada yada. She gets to meet cool people all the time and go travel to events. And honestly, it's not too bad when she leaves because, you know, goes night or whatever, not literally, but like, it's just, a little more laid back sometimes, I guess. Cause you know, since she's so busy all the time, sometimes we would have to move our schedule around to adjust for hers. But when she's gone, we don't have to do that. So it just kind of goes a little bit easier, if you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, that's really the gist of it. So that's a little bit about our personal life. We got married in 2003. So when people ask us, when did you meet Dwayne? 2003, when did you guys get married? 2003. <laughs> Two months later. I can't imagine my life without Dwayne and the family that we have built here together. Like we are as solid as a relationship can be. I'm actually very, very proud of us. Um, we stick together like glue, right? We have gone through so much life together. And I was actually just telling him this a couple of days ago that I am 40, I'm going to turn 41 this year, right? And Dwayne, um, I've known him for 20 years now. So in one year, Within the next year, I've known him for half of my life. Think about that. Half of my life. So that's amazing. Then in 2011, so mind you, we got married in 2003, right? I did all kinds of odd jobs between 2003 and 2011. I worked in a jewelry store. I worked in a plastics department. I have a restaurant food safety certification. I mean, I worked as a babysitter. I worked as a server in a restaurant. I worked in, in um, a plastics department. I did shipping and receiving for another company. I worked as a secretary. Like, as I like to joke and say, I did um, what I like to call a process of elimination of what I don't want to be when I grow up. And realtor was not one of them, actually. So that's why I chose that. No, I didn't even choose to be a realtor. What happened is this time, so fast forward 2011, I'm a stay-at-home mom. We almost lost Duke when Duke was born. So for a while, I stayed home because I could not imagine handing over my sick child to a stranger and we didn't have family to, to watch um, Duke, right? So I was like, no way. I cannot give my sick child to anybody. So I stayed home. I stayed home for about a year and a half, two years, and I got itchy. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to do something. I need to talk to someone. I need to put makeup upon any two i don't know about you but i do value i do put value on how much money i make meaning that i want to feel like i contribute i want to feel like i contribute to a family i want to feel like i contribute to a relationship i contribute to society i contribute to my life and i have something to show for at the end of it right like don't get me wrong i never forget one of my best friends who's now in heaven um when her youngest went to school i asked her i said hey Kate, like, what are you going to do? Like, Lily's going to school, what are you going to do? And she looked at me and she said, be a mom. And I was like, oh, like, 
that's an option. My brain could not even comprehend that. Don't get me wrong. I'm number one mom and a wife, number two work. But for me, I also have to be able to do both. I can't just do one or the other because it doesn't fulfill me. That fulfilled Kate and that's all she wanted to do is to be a mom. But my brain doesn't work like that. So I feel like I contribute when I use my brain. I feel like I contribute when I have to make decisions. I feel like I contribute to this world when I open a company, when I hire people. I feel like I contribute to this world when I create something that didn't exist before. I I feel like I contribute when I help others, when I share my knowledge, when I go and speak. Like I feel like I contribute when I teach these like marketing snippets for people so they can build their own brand. Like, this is what's important to me on the business side of the world. And I have, I feel like God has blessed me with a very, very nice brain and I do like to use it. I actually don't know how not to use it. I'm pretty much always thinking <laughs> if you make me. I, mean, I have two options. My brain is on or I'm out and sleeping. Like uh, there's no in between between the two. Or I'm, na, 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 or I'm out mid sentence. Like literally mid sentence. We could be in a fight mid sentence. If I'm done with the day, I'm done. I'm, I'm. My neighbor at the time, she thought it would be a great idea for me to get licensed to be a real estate agent. And at the time, I was a stay at home mom. And I was like, what a great idea. Like, psh, how hard can it be? These people show a house to this couple or three houses to this couple that sharpens pencils and collects butterflies and they qualify for $2 million and they buy one of the houses. And they're nice to you the whole time, right? And there's no drama. You just smooth sail to the closing table. And I was like, sign me up for that. So I went and she actually introduced me to real estate one. She said, I already talked to this broker. Go talk to them and they will pay for your school if you pass. So that's what I did. I went and talked to real estate one. I truly had no idea how all this works. I didn't understand how real estate works, how you can broker shop. I didn't understand. I didn't know anything about real estate. I just wanted to get out of the house, guys. I wanted to put real clothes on, hold a normal sentence and conversation with an adult and not just Google Gaga all day. And I wanted to make money. And I and I wanted to like have a position, right? Like in, in a situation where I am not limited to how much money I can make. In real estate, the sky's the limit. I hate to say the sky's the limit because there is no limit, right? You can make as much money as your little heart desires. You can build a team, a local team, a, an extension team, a downline, an organization. You can buy a brokerage. You can, you name it, have a title company, a JV, joint venture, do mortgages, insurance, you name it. Like there, there's so many different fields of work that kind of just feeds off of real estate. It never ends. Like the opportunities are freaking endless. And that's how I got into nine companies. <laughs> That's why we are here today, uh, that we call this show Go Go Preneur, because I realized through the years that I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I'm not hireable. I don't show up on time pretty much anywhere. I wear whatever I want. Most importantly, I say whatever I want. Don't get me wrong, I never break the law, but I always break the rules. I don't like rules. I don't like people telling me how you're supposed to do things because that's how you did it for the past 20 years. I don't care. When I got into real estate, people tell me you must cold call, you're not going to make it. You buy leads or you're not going to make it. You must buy Zillow leads you're not going to make it. You're going to have to door knock or you're not going to make it. Or you're going to have to farm an area or you're not going to make it. No, I don't have to do any of that. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it my way. And this is why we are here today, right? Got licensed with Real Estate One. They were amazing. I stayed with them for seven and a half years. I became a top producing agent and I want to see in my third or fourth year of real estate. My very first year, I made $16,000. I probably paid more than fees and gas. So that doesn't count, right? Next year, doubled my income, doubled my income, doubled my income. And fast forward 2018, in February, I decided to switch over to Keller Williams. Keller Williams got to me through the years with all the closings and stuff. All of these brokerages would reach out to me after a closing and be like, hey, Google, what would it take for you to come over to Remax? And finally, Keller Williams got to me. None of the other brokerages had a chance, not even Keller, to be honest with you at the time, because I had an amazing cap at Real Estate One. There was no reason for me to have to switch. In real estate, we have what's called a cap and a cut. So any, every agent that gets a real estate license, they have to work for a brokerage and the brokerage is going to take a cut off of every single commission until that agent reaches their cap. So each brokerage is kind of different. Some actually don't have a cap at all, but we have these fees that we have to pay to a brokerage. So every realtor will always look at the numbers. We will look at of like, where is it worth to stay, right? Where do the numbers make sense? So it didn't make sense for me to go anywhere because my cap and cut was so amazing, a real estate one. But what they didn't have, and I was finally growing into that position, they didn't necessarily have a team structure. So I was ready to build a team and I couldn't build a team because they didn't really have it, right? So if I wanted to build it, I kind of had to like pave the way and there was just like, they were a little um, archaic in their systems, right? It wasn't impossible, it's just 
was a lot more work than if I just went somewhere that already have the systems, their infrastructure is already built, so I'm not building it myself. So I switched to Keller Williams for the main reason of what they called at the time profit share. So through the years, I have attracted a lot of agents to different brokerages because um, I didn't attract them to real estate one because I would talk to somebody from California and I was in Michigan and there was no real estate one in California. So I sent them to a killer, right? sent them to a cold war bank or a compass or century 21. So because I already did what's called agent attraction, I just wasn't getting paid for it. I was like, well, hold on a minute. It requires time, right? I enjoy doing it. Don't get me wrong. But that means it takes time away from production. So it was time for me to go and, and um, you know, get paid for that activity that I'm doing every single day. So that's why I switched to Keller for profit share. If it wasn't for Keller, would have never looked at the idea of revenue share. So today, fast forward, I'm at EXP since October of 2018, and we, we built an organization that's called Team GoGo. That's over a thousand agents now. So you're going to see a lot of Team GoGo references to these um, videos that we are going to share the knowledge with you. And I will share experiences about what it's like to build a team, you know, what's the mindset, the system, the processes that you need to do, um, the celebrations, the agent's retention, because it's one thing to get them come, it's a whole other thing to make them stay. The whole idea with this Gogopreneur show and this introductory episode is for you to understand my evolution in the business industry, in this entrepreneurial ship. And then the idea is that in the future episodes, I'm going to bring you the things and in, in smaller bite-sized pieces, the things that you can now learn through my mistakes or my life lessons. And I'm going to bring in experts, the people who I met through the years who are who hold knowledge in that specific subject that we are going to have an episode about. And then they are going to share your knowledge for you to now take these bite-sized pieces, learn something in every single episode and take it back into your life and into your evolution, into in your own process of entrepreneurship. This is why we call the show Googlepreneur is because first, number one, what do I teach? Branding. What's important in branding? Your brand. What is my brand? My brand is GoGo. It's GoGopreneur. GoGo's International. It's Team GoGo. It's Grat, which is GoGo's real estate team. It's GoGo's Bootcamp. It's GoGo, 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 GoGo. That is my brand. So I teach a lot of branding, right? But I also teach a lot of coaching and training and team building and all of these things. So Team GoGo is what we call our downliner organization here at EXP. Now, I also have a small team back in Michigan. I'm actually shooting this video in Florida. As you can see, the palm trees in the outside in the window. So GRAT is GoGo's real estate team. The reason GRAT was formed, even though I never really wanted to be a team lead, I absolutely don't want to have a mega icon team. To me, that's uh, an adult daycare and I don't do that. I don't run adult daycare. That's a lot of work and I'm just not cut out, cut out for it. So that's the other thing you're going to learn about me is that my personality is a little bit of a tough love. Eastern European way, right? That's where I was raised. I do not filter. I can't, my filter, not, not that it's broke. I don't think I ever got one. I think when God was giving out filters, um, I may have skipped the line. I skipped that line for sure. Even my friends will tell you that I cannot lie. Not that I can't lie, I can't even sugarcoat things. Like if you don't want to know what your touch looks like in those jeans, then you're better off just not asking me or deal with the consequences because I can't. Rachel actually told me that <laughs> a couple of days ago. I was like, I reach I'm so sorry. I'm like, I, I just, I just have to see the truth. I'm like, I just have to see the truth. And she looked at me and she goes, go, go. You never lied in your life. And I was like, that's true. That's true. I can't, guys. I can't. The truth blah, just comes right out before I can say, oh, well, I should have probably sugarcoated that. Shoot, I should have not said that. It's just who I am and how I work. This is what you get with me. The good thing, though, with me is that you always know where we stand. I'm not, I do not gossip. I do not do drama. My life is drama free. You can ask anybody. There's no freaking drama in my life because I don't put up with it. One is my favorite sentences. You have a problem? Fix it. Yeah. Life in my eyes is that simple. So if I have a problem with someone, let's say I have a problem with you watching here, of course I won't, but let's say I do, right? You would be the first one to know. I don't do the, oh, let me go to so-and-so and talk about the situation and then so-and-so is going to somehow you're going to hear it back. That's never going to happen with me. If you have a problem and your phone is ringing, that's me calling you to tell you that we have a problem, right? And then we're going to fix it. That's pretty much how I work. I also don't do second chances. I joke and say, I'm not Jesus. Sorry, I don't. I will... Um, forget, but I won't forgive. And by forget, I mean, if somebody put a gun in my back or a, a knife in my back, I'm not giving you another bullet, so you, another chance, so you can shoot me again because you failed in the first place. When I am done, I am done. 
And I think it's very hard for most people to understand, even for my husband. He's like, how can you be able deep in a relationship with someone, like your best friend and something, and then you just stop talking to them? I just can't. I don't know how to explain it to you, but that's how I do business decisions too. If I catch you stealing from me, if I catch you being lazy, if I catch you something, as soon as you showed me your character, we are done. If it's negative, of course. If it's positive, we'll be best friends forever. I have most of my friends been my friends forever. Like my childhood best friend, Reka and uh, Emesha and my sister, Reka, right? Like we have been friends for yay big. Like Emesha has been my friend since I was 14 years old. I'm 41 years old. Like my very first, like one of my best friends, Kevin here in the US, he's been my first manager here in my very first job. He's the person that calls me Gwen because in corporate America, people used to call me Gwen. So I have very, very meaningful relationships. And what I want to get with this conversation to the point is that it's okay that some people are here for a season and some people are here for a reason and some people are here for a lifetime. And what I mean by a season is that it's okay to outgrow people. Sometimes some people serve you, serve a purpose in your life for a season. Sometimes some people serve a purpose in your life for a reason, meaning you need to learn a lesson. And as soon as you learn that lesson, they are no longer in your life because they serve the purpose, what they were here placed into your life to serve. And the next one is some people here for a lifetime, meaning that they are here and they will be here because you were probably friends or your souls were attached in another life in another capacity. I am huge in believing that in this life, we are having our soul is having a physical experience, not that our body got a soul for this life. I believe that our soul is eternal and we have a physical experience on this earth, on this earth with an, with an eternal soul. So my soul searching, um, a lot of research I have put into that years and years and years. I'm sure a lot of this is going to come through. So my idea with Gogopreneur is pretty much to show you everything, right? The good, bad, and the ugly. The anything from the mindset to the quotes that changed my life to the books that changed my life, the trips and the relationships and the opportunities that were put in front of me and the lessons that I have learned from that. I do not have it figured out by any means. Like I am still learning, right? Just like all of us. But my idea is I want to share the knowledge that I already hold. I want to share with every single one of you. Maybe I know something that you don't know, and maybe you can learn from my life lessons and my pain so sad that I have learned, right? So then you don't have to go through that pain to learn the same life lesson. Does that make sense? Okay, so back to Grat. So Grat is Gogo's real estate team. And then we have two full-time agents now and a part-time agent. And that's pretty much the extent of I want to grow that local team for. Grat is in Michigan. But as you can see, we live in Florida. Um, we moved in July of this year, and we are planning on being down here in the school year and up in Michigan in the summer times. So we kept our Michigan house. So the Michigan team, Grat, runs fully without me physically being present. We do um, weekly Zoom calls and then phone calls, and we have a group chat. And that's pretty much how I run my team up in Michigan. We are right now, we're going to close this year probably with 70 transactions. We do not run ads. I do not have an office. I have no expense on that side of the business. It's running truly off of organic social media marketing, which is pretty much what I teach for every other realtor as well. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not against running ads, but very, very seldom. I actually have never run an ad for grad. We run ads. If you have seen my ads, you have seen it for Gogo's Bootcamp, right? But never for my local team. So Grat is my local team in Michigan. Team Gogo is the downline and organization, which is nationwide. We have over um, agents in 45 different states and in five different countries. And there's over a thousand of us. That's called Team Gogo organization. We call it an international family of agents. Then I started my bootcamp. So Gogo's Bootcamp is my be how you know me. Um, through the years, all these agents would be like, hey, go. first of all, they made fun of me, right? I'm like, oh, there's going to go again. She's going to take another selfie right yes because i knew for whatever reason that that's my avenue that's my cup of tea and i sip it so well somebody said right like when you find that thing where your soul and your gut feeling is telling you that that is what you need to be doing because it feels right it feels so good when you do it and it doesn't feel like warp right that was social media for me and even though i was doing it and i started doing it in an era where it was not cool right? Like nobody was, I was the first one in Pinkley, Michigan, or probably even Livingston County that had a Facebook business page, right? For Google's real estate. That's how the madness started for me. It started with Google's real estate on Facebook out of necessity because I didn't have anyone that, that going to buy a house from me. Like I didn't, I didn't have a cousin guys still to this day. I don't have anyone that's related to me by blood on this whole continent, 
besides my own two kids that I created. Other than that, nobody that I know of that I'm related to on this continent. So imagine coming to a country where you don't know anyone, you barely speak the language, right? You're not related to anyone. There's no cousin, there's no college friend. I didn't go to school here, right? Zero freaking US education. And not now suddenly I was selling houses. Who's gonna buy a house from me? Over the years, right, out of necessity, I got really good at figuring out technology. I got really good at building systems. I got really good at figuring out cheap ways how to do things because I was broke for so long that it's almost like I'm allergic to spend money. <laughs> so I'm going to help you exactly that through the years and through these episodes of, to show you how you can do things the most cost effective ways, right? Like not buying leads, not you know, having offices, not having overhead and expenses and lab and liabilities and all of those things. So I try to do everything as cost effective as possible. Right. So then um, Google's Bootcamp Age of Interaction course came about for both of which we got two comic club awards for both of the courses were built on ClickFunnels, which means ClickFunnels gives out an award. The top 2% of the people at ClickFunnels users get this award. And we have two of them called Google uh, for one is for Google's Bootcamp Age of Interaction and the other one for Google's Bootcamp Social Media, which means that we have sold over seven digits in these courses. Each of these courses have collected revenue over seven digits. So that's amazing, right? Um, then <laughs> we started a transaction coordination company. And what happened there is I realized that over time, guys, you're going to know how much your time is worth. Meaning that when you take your end year income, right? And you're going to break it down to how many hours you traded for that income at the end of the year, you're going to get what's called an hourly rate. So I realized today my hourly rate is $4,200 an hour. Well, I spent eight hours, about a week, eight hours in this transaction coordination company and running it and the meetings and the yada, yada, yada. When I did the math, I was like, mm, I don't make enough money of how much time I'm spending because now I know what my hourly rate is. So now if I take that hourly rate and I go and spend it in this company, that's going to make me 10 times the amount of money that this company will. Where do you think I should spend the time? So even though sometimes some ideas are good ideas, can you tell me what's the enemy of good? You're probably thinking that. No, enemy of good is great. You might be having good. That might be a good idea, but you could have it great. You could have a great idea. And if you're spending the remainder of your time on good ideas, you have no time left for great ideas. Does that make sense? So even though um, the transaction coordination company was a good idea, because in the, the Team Gogo organization alone, we do over 2,000 transactions. Last year, we did 2,000 transactions. This year, we're probably going to do between four and 5,000 transactions a year, right? And having an in-house transaction coordination company would solve everybody's problems. But if that's creating me more work and that requires more time, then I already don't have more time that takes income away because it's not generating the income that I need to make in that hour to be smart entrepreneurial businesswoman, I need to let that go. So what I'm where I'm going with this conversation is that it's okay sometimes to start something and then shut it down when it's not making the money and just walk away from it and be like, I tried that, it was not worth it, not for me. It might be a good idea for somebody else. So what we did is that we gave all of our clientele away to an existing um, transaction coordination company. They've been in the business for eight years. They have great reputation and we just give all of our clientele to them for an affiliate income, right? So I'm still making money. It's just not requiring my time anymore because it didn't worth my time. So that was a transaction coordination company. Then we have a virtual assisting company, that, that one, we started with my business partner, Sammy, and then over time, we decided that we want to separate and not do things as a partnership anymore. We still very much friends. We still very much do business together. I'm still their super affiliate. I just don't partake in the weekly activities and the actual work and nitty gritty, right? So then the, that company, the, trend, the uh, virtual assisting company now is Sammy's baby, okay? Then I started a JV with a title company. A JV is a joint venture. So just so you know, when you hear these fancy words like a JV, that's a joint venture. What else do we have? Gosh, we have a syndications company. We have, I don't know about how many is that? Either either way, about eight companies. You still have nine, right? We closed um, um, Smooth TC down. So now we have eight companies. I did promise to my family and my right hand, Christy, that I am not going to open any more companies this year. So that list over there. <laughs> All those business ideas are going to have to wait until 2023 because you are as good as your word. So I promise so I'm not going to open any other ideas, but let's just say that I have a shit ton of ideas and they're all freaking amazing. So I can't wait 
Um, so that's pretty much who I am in um, a nutshell. So I'm open for suggestions. If you would like to send us your suggestions, please visit gogopreneur.com. Send in your ideas, the things that you would want me to share, the things that you would want me to talk about. If you would like to become our sponsor, um, which in each episode, we are going to have one or two sponsors up to one minute long. If you would like us to present your company, your product, your systems, processes, apps, whatever that you do um, in um, this TV show, right, which is also plastered everywhere from YouTube to, to my social media channels, um, we would love to have you now. We reserve the right to choose who's going to be our sponsor, but please don't hesitate. Fill out and maybe, maybe you get to become our sponsor. Okay. Um, sponsorship, I would like it to be as it has to do something with entrepreneurship. It has to do something with travel. It has to do something with systems, with like QuickBooks and things that make our everyday business life easier. It has to do with mindset, with books, with coaching, with, um, with taxes and savings and, you know, these marketing and, and these kind of things that makes someone's life as an entrepreneur, entrepreneur better. So if you have a business, that can help entrepreneurs to get to the next level in their businesses, please apply. We would love to have you. And then we have the conversation after that. If you are an entrepreneur, maybe started out in real estate like myself, and today maybe you own multiple businesses, or maybe you have great ideas, not good ones, you remember? Because the enemy of good is what? Great. So you have to things take things off of your plate so you can make more time for the great things in your life and the great ideas. Let me just put it this way. I live my life by this quote, I think it's from Zig Ziglar, then you can have absolutely anything in life. The more people you help to get what they want. So if I can help you reach your goals, then God in return will help you reach mine. Gogo Bethy is an international real estate influencer, a person who is dedicated to helping others succeed and only works with the best. I love working with her and her team because we share this passion in helping people be the best version of themselves. We also share the same core values here at my company that are the foundation of everything that we do. I'm Randy Gamo, CEO of National Mortgage Home Loans, and we pride ourselves on being the absolute best mortgage company, period. For the last three years, we have had the privilege of helping the clients of Team GoGo not just buy a home, but to realize a piece of their dream, the American dream. Here at National Mortgage Home Loans, we're a true family, from our loan officers to our coaches to our processors, our closers, and all of our office staff, but most importantly, you, our clients. Experience the true difference between working with a company that sees you as family and not just the number. Click on the link below and let us show you how we can help you today. What we put out there to the world is how I see the world. So when, I, when you see my content on social media, right, you see it because that's how I see the world. Those are the things that I put out there for the world. But you don't actually get to see what everybody else sees who lives and works with me and gets to spend life with me, right? So I want you to also see the downside, the negative, right? Like not, I'm not always um, peachy, right? Sometimes I'm a total B-I-T-C-H with a capital B. And I, I feel like, you might be going through things in your life and entrepreneurship where you sometimes wonder if you're weird, if something's wrong with you because you're different than the rest of us. But I feel like we have to be, us entrepreneurs, we have to be because there's a lot of freaking no's in the world. Like, no, 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 you can't do that. No, I told you no, 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 no. Right? And if I just was like, okay, then would I be where I'm at today? Would I be where I'm at today? No. You have to fight. You have to have thick skin. You have to almost be like an asshole. Right? And I feel like I'm a cute little asshole. And sometimes I have to be because that's what's going to take us to the next level. Right? So the people that get to see me in real life, those are the people who can truly tell you, what am I like as a person? What am I like after hours? What am I like as a friend? What am I like in business hours? So I'm excited to share their view of me and what it's like to be working or living with. Um, actually, Coach Bird has an event called Living with a Monster, and I think it's so fitting. We also, we are, we have to be little monsters, right? Because if not, here's my favorite quote. If you don't build your dreams, somebody is going to hire you to build theirs. So you have to be a little monster because if not, this industry will chew you up and spit you out by noon. So my friends, my family, my childhood friends, the people that have known me for the longest, the people that have known me in my most vulnerable times of my life, the people who have known me in the most fun times of my life, the people that we have so much pictures and videos of each other doing stupid shit, right? That we always joke and say with our friends that we will never run for president because we have so much blackmailing material on each other that it's not even funny. 
I am so excited and so honored that they took the time to create a personal video to share what am I like in real life. Because I want you to see truly my idea is not for people to talk about me. The idea is for you to see that being abnormal is okay and you have to be. Because if you want to be the top one percenter, you have to do what 99% is not willing which requires a personality that 99% doesn't have, which requires a personality not to care what people think, which requires a personality to persevere, to go and go and go and go and freaking do until you go blue in the face because you said you would and because you will not stop until you receive that goal, until you achieve that goal, right? We are weird because we have to be. We are weird because if you were like everybody else, you would be average. I'll never forget that. My husband told me this because one day I was so frustrated with somebody and I was trying to help, right? And I was like, just wake up. Like, I'm shaking you. I'm dragging you to success. And you're like a three-year-old at freaking Target kicking and screaming to the finish. Like, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, why, right? Why are people the way they are? So I was asking my husband, I'm like, why are people like this? And he goes, honey, if everybody was like you, you would be average. My blue. So it's okay to be different. It requires to be different. Success requires for you to be different. If not, you would be average. So I want you to see how the world sees me, the people that have known me for the longest time. Because when I'm presenting me, I can only present me the way I see me, right? The way I live my life. But I want you to see in from other people's perspective. Maybe it will help you realize that you're good. We have a little bit in common. Gyögyőnek vagyok az édesanyja gyöngyvérnek, én is gyöngyvér vagyok, a nevem, nevét tőlem kapta. Na de mivel, hogy gyöngyvért az elég nehéz kiejteni, itthon volt gyögyő, aztán lett gogó, leegyszerűsítve, ékezetek nélkül. Hát egy pár szót, hogy milyen is volt ő gyerek korába. Hát sokat szerintem nem hagyott ki azóta is, nem változott azóta sem. Hát nagyon szabad szájú, bátor. Makacs. Hát voltak alkalmak, sok érdekes dolgok, amikor gyermek volt. Egy alkalommal mentem utána az óvodába, kint van a folyosón, kérdem, Gyöngyi, hát te miért nem vagy benne a teremben, mit csinálsz itt ki? Te valami rosszat csináltál. Ő, ő semmi rosszat, azt mondja, semmit. Gyöngyi, nem küldnek ki az óvodából a teremből, hogyha nem csináltál semmi rosszat. Hát az nem rossz apuk, amit csináltam, Zó néni felült az asztal, és én megmondtam, hogy szálljon le, mert pattanás lesz a segére. És akkor az óni engem kitett, hát az nem rossz apuk. Vagy volt olyan többek közt, hogy egyszer utaztuk a utóbuszra, mentünk nagymamához. És Gyöngyike persze ott az ölünkbe kicsi leányka szerepelt, és a hátunknál, aki ült a buszon, hát megkérte egy tanfelügyelő, egy tanárember, és kérte, hogy olyan édes kicsi leányka, hogy ott szerepel, ott énekelt, hogy adjuk egy kicsit oda, hogy vegye az ölibe. És felvettes, a nagy tanár úrnak azt mondja, bácsi, maga nem most fogad, olyan sárga a foga. Sokszor is szégyenített meg más előtt minket. Vagy volt olyan például, hogy elmentünk valakihez, hiába, hogy akkor álltunk fel mi otthon az asztaltól, jól lakva mentünk valakihez, esetleg azok pont étkeztek, és akkor kérdezték, hogy kértek? Hát mi nem kértünk, hát mi jó voltunk lakva. De Gyöngyike mindig persze ült oda, elsőnek mondta, jó, ez olyan finom, anyukám nem tud ilyen finomat főzni. Szóval nagyon sokszor szégyenített meg. Úgyhogy ami a szívén, a száján, ott ő mondta, mondta. Vagy volt egy ismerősünk, aki a bőr volt többek közt, börtönnél dolgozott, jött hozzánk, és persze, hogy bejött az ajtón, lehúzta a cipőjét. Gyögy, Péde büdös a Milici bácsinak a cipője. És ilyenek. Bárhova bementünk. Ő szétnézett egy-kettőre, minden házba ment, B szétnézett. Aztán, amikor eljöttünk, akkor mondta, apu, te láttad ezek, hogy milyen rendetlenség volt? Vagy ha például másképp, akkor mondta, jaj, te apu, láttad ezeknek, milyen szép butoruk volt? Szép lakásuk. Vagy szép a lakásuk, van, vagy igen. igen. Tehát mindent úgy megjegyezett, igen. úgy megnézett mindent, hogy... Aztán nehéz őt az elképzeléséből kitéríteni. A makacs olyan, mint én szerintem. A horoszkopunk is egy, mind a ketten bakok vagyunk. 
mondott például gyerekkorában rengeteget. Egyfolytában, de 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 sokszor még mondtam is, hogy hát inkább egyet csendbe verekedjetek, vagy gyöngyik el, mint hogy annyit mondjatok. Vagy mondtam, hogy legalább öt percet hallgassál gyöngyik el. Nem, de szerintem ő azért kellett ezt a pályát válaszza, hogy ő ott tudja kibeszélni jól magát, tudja elmondani az elképzelésre. Összevesztek az anyukájával jó keményen, és akkor ő nagy, ő, az anyukája egész nap durrogott, azt se tudta, mit csináljon. Jó felidegesítés. Ő bevet ügyesen, nyilat, nyugodtan lehet, vett egy könyve, és olvasott. De, de nagyon önálló volt örökké, kicsi korától olyan önállóan csinált mindent, nem kellett neki segíteni, vagy az iskolából is. Ő tudta, hogy neki van leszki, ő elment, örökké megtanulta. Ja, persze, elvégezte az egyetemet is, jól tanult. Nem azt mondom, hogy első tanuló volt, de mindig jól tanult. Volt szavaló versenyeken nyert, nagyon sok helyen, vagy elvégezte, érettségizett, utána elment önállóan, tiszta, egyedül kiválasztotta magának az egyetemet, hogy mit szeretne tovább tanulni, elment, beiratkozott, vagy az iskolából jött haza, mi soha nem kellett leüljünk vele, hogy tanuljunk. Különben ő olyan tanuló volt, hogy ő az iskolában, hogy az órán leadták az anyagot, ő úgy megtanulta, ott odafigyelt, hogy ő mikor hazajött, hát nem kellett ő leüljön tanulni. Sőt, a szomszédban volt egy tanárnő, aki mindig mondta nekem, hogy gyönyikéből nagyon sok mindent ki lehetne hozni, csak nincsen feneke, nem ül le. De ő órán meghallgatta, ő másnap azt ugye elő is adta, vissza is mondta Igen. az iskolában. A tanár elmondott Igen, azt, is. nem kellett, hogy üljön órák hozzat a könyvek előtt, nem. Vagy mikor ment egyetemre, akkor már dolgozott. Egyetemre járt, és mellette dolgozott. Látogatás, szóval olyan volt az egyetem, hogy mint egy látogatás nélkül egyetem, hogy csak vizsgázni kellett felmenni Magyarországra. Vizsga előtti nap, leült, akkor este, na ekkor itta az első kávéját, addig nem is kávézott soha, és akkor leült első este, és másnap reggel indultak Magyarországra. Ennyit készült az egyetemre, és minden vizsgája sikerült. Hello, my name is Rika. I am a Google sister. Uh, I'm going to speak in Hungarian because it's much easier for me. Amikor uh, gyerekek voltunk, akkor uh, Gyügyöt uh, mindig Gyöngyvérnek szólítottam, Gyöngyikének, mert uh, ugye akkor uh, még ez a Gyügyő meg Gogó név, ez, uh, nem volt ismert neki. Tehát családban mindig Gyöngyike volt. Ami előtt bárki még elgondolkozna, vagy megkérdeznék, én vagyok a fiatalabb, Három és fél évben nagyobb, mint én gyögyő. Elég érdekes volt a mi kapcsolatunk, mert um, így utólag visszagondolva nem volt elég hosszú. Mindig, um, tehát ő már liceumban elment itthonról, és uh, igazából csak 14 éves koráig uh, tudtuk uh, együtt tölteni az időnket. És um, volt néhány nyár, amikor uh, nagymamánál uh, nyaraltunk. Um, volt egy érdekes történet. Egyszer egy lépcsőn a uh, Játszottunk a kultúrház előtt, ahol a falukácskék minden nap felmásztak oda, és tele volt ilyen apró kis bogyókkal a lépcső, és ő váltig állította nekem, hogy azok csoki cukorkák, és hogy kóstoljam meg, mert nagyon finom. Azóta se tudjuk, hogy ott pontosan mi történt, ő mindig azt mondja, hogy megettem, én állítom, hogy nem ettem meg, ha bár, annyira nem vagyok biztos abban, hogy nem ettem meg, mert... Elég sokszor jó, nagy szerencsém van az életben, úgyhogy az is lehet, hogy megetette velem a kecske szart. Nem tudjuk. Szóval Gyögyő nem volt egy unalmas arc, szóval mindig, mindig ilyen érdekes dolgokat talált ki, és véghez is vitte. Ha nem voltam én, akkor valaki mással, de hogy amit el kigondolt, azt meg is csinálta. Egy másik ilyen történet, ami vele kapcsolatos és nagyon megmaradt, az az, hogy aludtunk egy este, vagyis, hogy én aludtam, egy szobánk volt mindig. Um, én már elaludtam, és ő könyvet olvasott mellettem. És egyszer um, rászállt egy szúnyogat az arcomra, de már el voltam én koppanva, és megkérdezte tőlem, hogy megütheti ezt a szúnyogot. Én nem ébredtem fel, tehát én nem tudtam, hogy mit tudt, valami választottam neki, mondtam, hogy uh-huh, igen, persze, és jó. Erre akkor a pofot bálkasztott. Hogy én arra ébredtem, hogy mi történt, mi volt ez, miért kaptam? 
Na, de hát a lényeg csak az volt, hogy ez a szúnyog ott volt az arcon, azt meg kellett ütni, meg kellett annak a szúnyognak halni. Úgyhogy nem volt egy ilyen érzelmes típus, hogy ő ezt végig gondolja, hogy de mi történik, ha pont ezért arcon csap. Tehát az az opció, hogy elhajtsa a szúnyogot, nem vált fent, mert azt ő le akarta ütni, és kész. Úgyhogy nem bántani akart azzal engem, csak szúnyogot kellett megütni, ennyi. Úgyhogy figura, figura csaj volt mindig. Egy másik kedvenc szórakozás az volt, hogy uh, még kicsik voltunk, hogy mindig jeszkedett engem. De én nem tudom, hogy kicsit ilyen szórakozottabb voltam, mert ezt kiszemeltem, mindig megállt valahol, vagy valami, és buf, úgy megijedtem sokszor rettenetesen. Na, de egy alkalommal kigondoltam, hogy állj meg, mert most én ezt megbosszulom, és visszaadom neked, és megálltam a szubajtó mellett, hogy majd én jól megijesztem őt, megkapja most. Na, de megint egy kicsit elgondolkoztam, belefelejtettem, hogy miért is vagyok ott, és ő rájött, hogy hol lehetek, és mire készülök. Ö, és akkor odajött, és megjesztett ő engem ismét, de akkor úgy, hogy szó szerint meg se tudtam szólalni percekig, elsápadtam, le kellett üljek, hozott nekem vizet, közben jöttek haza a szüleink, és ö, ö, akkor már tudtuk, hogy bajba kerül, mert már nem első felszólítása volt, hogy ezt, ezt ne játszódja, mert hogy ez, ez veszélyes, és ö, na de... Úgy is, tehát, hogy mindig önmaga gondolataival vezérelve, ő csak, mindig csak csinálta, ami neki jött, és mondom, akkor is úgy megijesztett, hogy pedig én akartam őt megijeszteni, na, de vele nem lehetett, tehát őt átverni, megviccelni, ő mindig rájött a turpisságokra, mielőtt én véghez ittem volna, úgyhogy ismét én ijedtem meg akkor is. Ami, ami jellemző volt kiskorunkban, hogy nem akart soha magával vinni sehová. A, ugye ez a négy év különbség, ez annyit jelentett, hogy ő mikor már viccelmus volt, akkor én még csak kisiskolás, tehát ő nagylány volt, én meg kislány, és akkor a szüleink mindig mondták, hogy menjen, be, menjen akkor akkor csak vigyen engem is. Na hát ő inkább nem ment, mint hogy engem magával vigye, mert hogy egy ilyen taknyos nem hurcol. Ugye azóta ez elég jól megváltozott, mert most már vinne magával, mindenhová, mindig hívna, hogy menjek vele, csak sajnos ugye a távolság miatt ez most már nem, nem működik, pedig um, én, én talán még most is mennék. Úgyhogy um, ez a távolság ez, uh, rátette bélyegét a mi kapcsolatunkra, de, de talán uh, ugyanakkor erős, erősített is rajta, tehát újraértékeltük azt, hogy uh, mit jelent egy uh, testvéri kapcsolat, vagy mit jelent az embernek a testvére, mikor csak egy van, és az is távol, uh, hiányzik, az az igazság, hogy hiányzik. Na de ezt, um, ezt, ezt jól tette, utó, utólag meggondolva, tehát ő, amit ott elért, azt itthon nem, nem lehetett volna megvalósítani, úgyhogy uh, értelme volt annak, hogy ő, hogy ő ilyen távol ment tőlünk, és uh, így, így, így már nem is haragszom ezért, mert, uh, mert egy álom, amit ő ott elért. All right, we are prepping for Gogo's big debut. Gogo Preneur. Here it is. <laughs> She's got two shots. <laughs> This is what it's gonna take. <laughs> Christy and I do not do well with cameras. We are the opposite of Gogo. So we need alcohol in order to be ourselves. Cheers to Gogo Preneur. Okay. Here we are. Here we are. We're talking about Gogo, Gogo Preneur. The new biggest thing. I'm a big fan. I'm a go go fan. Okay, so okay. let's talk about go go. Yes. So, first, first, let's talk about you. Who are you? I'm Rachel Swinton. I have known go go for like 10 years since before she was famous. When our kids were in preschool, when they were three, and we were doing mommy stuff, and she wasn't even on Instagram yet. <laughs> and um, she was still cute as hell back then, but just not famous. Um, But yeah, we've known each other forever since our kids were little, little babies. Oh, yeah. I miss her already. She's gone in Florida because she left us in Michigan. <laughs> But that's okay. I'm Christy. I've known Gogo since 2000 and 
shoot, I wrote this down and made sure I had it. Like, I knew it. So You knew her before I, like, I did. Did I really? Yeah, because Colby was... He was in... He was first grade when I met him. When I met them. Okay, so maybe you met her right after us. Because yeah. I met Colby when he was five, right after he was... Right when he was diagnosed, actually. Gotcha. I think he was... No, he was six when he was diagnosed with diabetes. So you were his diabetes person at school. Yep, I was. Yeah. So you met Gogo back when Kobe was in first grade. Yep. So that was Kobe is 15 now. Yeah. So that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yep. 2014, I think it was. Um, I started working at the elementary school where Kobe went to school um, as his diabetic aide. So it was wound up actually being perfect. My kids were in school. They both were in elementary school. My daughter just went to school for um, went to kindergarten. And I wanted to go back to work, so it just happened to work out perfectly because they, they needed someone at school. So it was somebody fun. that can tolerate Gogo is crazy. Because oh, yes. when it comes to Gogo's kids, she's oh, a mom there. Yes. You need to have somebody at school, mm -hmm. which understandably so. Yeah, Chrissy was like the person to deal with everything with Kobe, and yeah. Gogo developed a very personal relationship with you, <laughs> right? So. Yeah, Pretty personal. Yeah, I can remember when I first met her. Our kids were three in preschool, and I swear to goodness that woman would come to school dressed to a T, dressed up. So I always tell this story just because it's the best one. She one time came to school literally in cowgirl boots, <laughs> cowgirl skirt, cute top, showed up. The rest of us had freaking sweatpants and no brush teeth, like <laughs> no, brush teeth. no brush teeth. We were just hanging no out, dropping off our preschoolers and here's Go-Go. That was probably the first or second year that she started doing real estate probably, right? That was, I don't know, probably before me. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, they're still preschool. Yeah, we both yeah. boys were in elementary by my time. Uh, she so, forced herself upon me. I always say that she forced herself upon me really? because I'm not good at making friends and Gogo -Go makes friends everywhere she goes. Everywhere. Oh my gosh. It's, it's obnoxious. Yes. But I grew to love her dearly. But yeah. in the beginning, I was like, why are you talking to me right now? Yeah. And her <laughs> accent 10 years ago was much, oh, thicker, much thicker yeah. of an accent. So I'm like, what the fuck did she just say? I didn't know what she said to me, and I I'm still just say that I'm saying day. yes or no. Oh. I, I'm like, I hope I said the right thing. I have, I have no idea. But obviously, after That's ten funny. years, I can understand that chick in her sleep when she's talking. I, yeah, yeah. Like Gogo -Go doesn't sugarcoat anything. No. One of the things I said before was, uh, like Gogo, -Go, she might. If you're if you're a weak person, you mm -hmm. might get scared by her yeah. personality, probably. But um, she's. Pretty truthful, pretty, pretty truthful. She is the truth. Yeah, she doesn't say anything but the truth, right. um, to a fault. She's That's very good at sticking her her mouth, her foot in her mouth. And yeah, just, yeah. Because it just comes. It's out. the Hungarian in her. Yes. She says everything that she thinks. Let's see. Let's rewind back to 2017. That's when Gogo -Go asked me to join her in real estate. At first, it was just a few a few hours a week, maybe th I think three days a week for three or four hours a week. I remember when I came to her office for the first time, it was hilarious because I came to her office and there was a, it was a desk, there was a picture on the wall, a mirror on the other wall, a desk and a couch. There was something that was kind of a file cabinet, but not a real file cabinet. So I looked at her and I'm like, hmm, okay, you have all these deals, you have all this stuff going on, but where is it? Where's these, where are these deals at? Where's the proof? Well, she always told me that it was in her brain. Like it's in her, it's, it's right here. This is where it is. We started off just locally here in Michigan with a cute little team called Gogo's Real Estate. As we decided to grow bigger and we joined DXP, we decided to make it bigger. We decided to have an organization. That organization to this day is a thousand plus agents and counting. It's only been three short years and it's just, it has been life changing. Why did we blow up so fast? How did it happen? Go, go. It's all go go. She's the brains behind it. She is the one who comes up with the ideas, the plan. She dreams about it and it just happens. She says it and it just happens. It's a, it's unlike anything I've ever seen. Go go is unlike anything I've ever seen. She is I like to say a bulldog, but uh, I don't even know. Not really a bulldog. She is the most genuine, confident, strong person. Strongest person I've ever met. She has been. She's came over to America on her own. 
when she was young and got into real estate by herself. Once she got too big, she brought me in. Then we grew Team GoGo, -Go, Go Go's Boot Camp. Now we're doing the TV show, not to mention a title company, all of these other businesses. And it's just the two of us. How does that happen? It's it's literally a match, a match that I would have never expected. I'm a completely different person than GoGo. -Go. She's a completely different person than I, but together we just make we make magic happen, I guess. I don't know. But I know I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for GoGo. -Go. I am so grateful for everything that she's done for me, for my family. We've gotten to a point in our lives where it's easy. It's just easy. I guess that's the easiest way to say it. But let me tell, like, tell you a cute little story. I remember one of the days when I um, was working at the school, taking care of Kobe, and again, we're in this small town here in Pickney, Michigan. It's literally, this little tiny town, Gogo comes in. She's always dressed to the T. I am a t-shirt, jeans, hoodie type girl. I've always got, I got one pair of shoes that I wear because that's just who I am. I'm not a shoes person. And Gogo, I remember, came into the office and I'm working, sitting in the office with all the elementary school secretaries and it's just a whole window of walls. And here comes Gogo walking by in her leather pants, her burgundy or maroon fringed heels and just to the tee, gorgeous. Literally gorgeous, just walking by and you could see the women. All of them were just like watching her go by. And of course, you know them, they're always like, oh, go, 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 she's just, go, go. Well, that's just who she is. And that's, and she has no problem being who she is. She's not gonna let anybody tell her different. She's go-go, she's happy with who she is, she loves her body, she loves everything about her, and I think that's the difference of a, you know, like coming, the different cultures. So coming over from Europe to the United States, I mean, here it's like we almost are ashamed of our bodies. And where she's from is, God gave it to you, love it, who cares? Love who you are, love what you are, because God gave it to you. She believes in it, she puts it out there in the universe, and it just happens, and it's unlike no other. I don't know how she does it, I really don't, but she has so many ideas. It is literally to the point where anytime she talks, it's literally money-making ideas. We are doing this because we love you, and we're so proud of you, and everything yeah. that you've done and accomplished, and what we're, you're gonna accomplish, because I know it's not over. No, it's not over. She's gonna be on the stage with all the biggest people within mm -hmm. a few years, and we're gonna be like, yep, yep, there she is. She made it, she made it. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Bye, guys. Go, go, preneur. Here we go. We're back, we're back. After a few drinks, we're cheering to. Gogo's success. It's four o'clock, guys. It's four o'clock. Four p.m. I think we should carry four o'clock on the dot. We're in the drop top, cruising the street. That's right. Oh yeah, I know that one. I do know that one. I think we should put wigs on and karaoke. Yes, wait, that's what Because that's what Gogo would be doing if we were yes. here right now drinking at four o'clock in the afternoon. Yes, Gogo. She's drunk. So let I'm me tell you a story of my situation. <laughs> talking to this girl from the Hungarian nation. Just cut that out. No. Why? Why can't it just, why does, why do the sellers? Real estate is complicated. That's why you need to have a real, a real store that you can trust to do everything for you because it's, it's complicated. Yes. That made me laugh so hard because you <laughs> said <laughs> Back space or really bad or runs. I don't know. It's so funny. And I'm getting over a cold and I'm still doing this for you. <sighs> I keep talking about this, but this is the day. She can never fire you during your menstruation time. So of. if me or Gogo, -Go, doesn't matter. Yeah. Either one of us are on our period. Because Gogo -Go could fire everybody if she's mm -hmm. on her period. Just mm -hmm. fire everyone. She's the smartest one of us all. She's an, like and that. she's an alien. <laughs> she's an alien. She's, she's too an smart. Alien. <laughs> she's an alien from another country. <laughs> this one was not a cheap wig. No. I bought this for a Go-Go's 80s party and I left it here just so we, we love you, Go -Go. keep wearing it. Yeah. Go-Go is the shit. She does epic shit. I don't know if you can see that. She can does the We, we want to be famous even more than she already is. Yeah. <laughs> what are we going to be then? Yeah. 
Oprah. I'm gonna be Gail. Who are you? I'm Gail to o her Oprah. Oh, fuck. Be Will. What am I gonna be? You changed lives, so many lives, and I don't even think you realize. But she does because she's smart. She does realize. She knows, and because she's complete. We love you, Go Go. You're yes. the man. The, the wolf, woman. The wolf, wolf man. man. We love you. Peace out. I did this back when Go Go was not famous, and then I, I put her name on my boobie so that she couldn't deny our friendship. You can't deny all of our moments, Go Go. They're always gonna haunt you forever, forever, forever. I'm videotaping me, videotaping you, videotaping me, videotaping my boobie. I love Google's butt. It's big and juicy. <laughs> How now, brown cow? Unique New York. Unique New York. Um, I used to joke around and say, call them squirrels, because we would be in the middle of talking, and as soon as she, we were talking about one thing, she would say, oh, how about this? And how about that? We should do this. Oh, I have a great idea. And I'm like, if you have, I'm gonna shoot all them squirrels. If you have one more squirrel moment, I'm just gonna take a little BB gun and I'm gonna shoot them all because I can't do them all. I can't, there's too many squirrels and which ones are the most important? Which ones should we do? Which ones should we not do? And one of the funny stories was, I remember her telling me, she said to me one day, she goes, well, that's your job, Christy. That's what I pay you for. Your job is to find out which squirrels are what are the rights, what squirrels you really need to worry about? What are the most important squirrels? Are you kidding me? I'm supposed to make that decision when you pull 500 squirrels out of your butt? I'm supposed to know which squirrels are the most important or which ones that I need to focus on and which ones I shouldn't focus on? Well, I've learned the hard way that you're the only one that can decide that. You are go-go, -go. this is your business, you decide. And that's what, that's, it is what it is. Wait, what? Wait. What do we do? I need to take you home and put you to bed. <laughs> Before dinner time. Should we put this in our pants so we have like, is this filming? Yes. It's filming right now, <laughs> shit. So guys, this is where I went to high school from 2016 until, oh, 2016, yeah. 2016 to 2020. No. <laughs> no, 96 to 2000. Turn it off. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm like, when did I go to school here? Okay, turn it off. She said it over. She gets annoyed at times if we're sleeping, laying in bed. My hands are usually on her butt. She's always been the best, the kindest, best person you ever meet. <laughs> she has the kindest heart, the biggest soul. Like, <laughs> hi, you, you, we live in Florida, no, I'm not, I'm not even, I am Gogo's son, do, do. In the next Gogopreneur episode. This one's gonna be more like what it's like to travel and speak, like what are speaking engagement like and traveling for that. And we're still, even in the end of the day, I'm number one job is I'm a mom and I'm a wife. I want to show the real stuff, right? The stuff right. where they get to see how this is the life and the road. Let's go. For all the products and services featured in this episode, Pause the show right now, scan the QR code, and I will see you on our website.